Next, we'll show you the software needed for the chat tool. We're going to add one more driver function, one more input function, which is going to be non-blocking. Non-blocking means that if the receive FIFO is empty, the receive FIFO is empty, that means it has no data. And so rather than waiting like a busy wait, what will happen is we will simply return a zero, and that will mean that there is no data. If the receive FIFO empty flag is zero, that means there is data, and so we will input the data, and return the data. This will allow the main program to check to see whether it has received any input from the other microcontroller and process it. But if there is no data, it doesn't have to wait. So this is different from the in car we wrote earlier, which was a blocking I.O. The difference is that the blocking I.O. would have sat in a loop waiting for the input to be available, and once it's available, it's going to return the data it reads. Absolutely. Okay, so what's next? This is the main program of our chat tool. We will initialize the PLL at 80 megahertz. We'll use Cystic down here for a wait. We'll initialize our UART and we'll initialize the port F buttons and LEDs. The main body of the chat tool, you can see, is a great big while loop. The first thing we're going to do is check to see if switch 1 is pressed. If switch 1 is pressed, that means it's a zero, we are going to select the next color in the wheel. And you can see that is done with this line of code here, which will add one to the color and then mask it with a seven. So at all times, the value color is goes zero, one, two, all the way up to seven. If the switch is not pressed, then we will go to the next step. And we will check to see if switch two is pressed. If switch 2 is pressed, the time to send the message. And so what will happen is we will encode the message and send it. So switch 1 is our chooser and switch 2 is our send ah, yes. button. Yes. The last thing we're going to do, and if it's not pressed, We'll go to our, our third step, which is to check to see whether we have any received messages. And that was our input non-blocking uh, from the previous slide. We saw with the non-blocking input, we had two choices. Either we had no input or we did have input. If we have input, we're going to decode that input. In our case, the encoding and decoding is very simple. To encode the message, we took the number 0 through 7 and added 30 to it to get the ASCII 0 through 7. To decode the message, we're going to mask off the 30, so again, we have a number between 0 and 7. And we will set the color to that input value. The fourth step is to output to the LED either the value that we've selected with the press switch or the value that we've read from the input. And so if we don't have an input, we're going to go here. We're going to add a fifth step, and that is a 20 millisecond wait, and this will remove the bounce of the switch. And so these steps, one, two, three, four, and five, are repeated over and over again in the while loop.
So John, I understand the flowchart, but I see that you have this variable called previous PREV SW1 and PREV SW2. What are those used for? They're used to make sure when I touch the switch, it increments the color just once. And the way I'm going to do it is in this if statement here, I'm going to look for the touch or the falling edge of switch one. So the switch one will be touched when the switch one is zero, but the previous value of switch one through the loop was a one. So if the switch one is not pressed, it goes through the loop and there's a one in this variable. And if I'm going around the loop and I touch the switch, it will become a zero. So if switch one is a zero and the previous time through the loop it's a one, I've detected the first touch event. So the color number is incremented just once. So otherwise the switch one would be zero and the previous value of the switch would also be a zero. That tells me that it's been pressed but not released yet. Yes. And we do the same thing for switch two and it's previous two. Because when I push the button, I only want to send one message. Okay, and the input that we're talking about reading is from the UART in this, in this picture in the flowchart. That's coming from the UART. Absolutely. Okay, so let's play. Yeah, let's go. Cool. 